In this video, we are going to see about the formats, the instruction formats. So, what before going that, just I'll give a brief introduction to instruction codes. So, the internal organization of a computer is defined by the sequence of micro operations it has to carry over to complete a job. So, we already see a microprocessor will consist of many registers, okay, internal registers and consist of many control signals, arithmetic logic, etc. in order to complete a task, given task. Other than that, it has memory unit, which we call it as a primary memory or uh, main memory, etc. So now what happens in our, you normally what we will do is we'll write the program and load it into the main memory. From main memory, while line by line. So whatever I put in the main memory is nothing but now we call it as a instructions. Okay, those instructions will be taken, read by line by line, and then it will be transferred to the internal registers, which is nothing but our B, C, D, H, L, etc. And then, which in turn will go to the, which will be uh, decoded by the instruction de decoders, and the operations uh, set in the particular instructions code will be executed with the help of the arithmetic logic unit and all controller logic. This is what the process. Now, so, how many registers are there? Each computer, each microprocessor has its own set of registers, right? So based on that, the manufacturer will design the instructions codes. So the internal organization of a computer, again, I come to this, the organization of computer is defined by the sequence of micro operations it has to carry over to complete a job. In order to complete a job, what are all the registers to be uh, to, uh, to be taken in order to complete. So how many registers are there? So based on those registers only, the instructions codes will be formed and given by the manufacturer. Using that only the programmer, uh, given a task, he will do the, write the instructions code, are the programs, okay? So the required data will be in registers and memory. That's what I have said now. That is, it will be first in the main memory, which in turn will be taken, read one by one and placed in the respective internal registers and the operations to be carried over. The program that consists of a set of instruction in sequence is necessary to carry over the operations on these registers and memory. The instruction codes together with the data are stored in memory. So for example, I want to store a value C equal to 45 means C is a variable. Here we can say in terms of registers and 45 is the data. That's one. So along with the registers or the instructions code, the data is also be stored in the memory. The CPU then read each instruction from memory and places in the control register, which is then interpreted and executed. So we'll see the instruction code formats. So before going through all those things, first we have to see the instruction code format and what, what is the meaning of that. This is a group of bits that inside the computer to perform a specific operations. The most computers fall into these three types of CPU organization. One is single accumulator organization. That'd be only uh, all the operations to be carried over is based on a uh, just a accumulator. All the operations will be carried over by the accumulator. And uh, another one is general register organization. That's what multi registers, B, C, D, H, L, and other uh, temporary registers, all those things will be involved. Another one is complete stack organization. Another one is all these things are also will be involved in order to carry over the job. Now we'll see the instruction format. An instruction format, what do you mean by instruction format? If you take higher level language, say C or C, anything, what you do, you have a while loop means you have some format. While, then open bracket, open curly braces, then within that you will write the uh, respective C statement and then close the curly braces. When you close the curly braces of the while, then what is what is meant by that? The while loop is over, right? Same way for loop. For then open bracket, you, ha you have to declare the variables and then initialization, then conditions, all those things will be given. So for any, if you take any language, it has some format syntax. So based on that syntax only, you have to write the program. So like that, a machine code also has a instruction. This is given by the manufacturer. They follow some format. So like this, it is a format given like this. The 0 to 11 will be the address and the up to this 
uh, uh, here 0 to 11 means it is 12 bits. So totally we see 16 bits, isn't it? Address takes 16 bits. So within that 16 bits, 0 to 11 will be the actual address. Then this will be the opcode. This will be for the instruction format. Right. If it is a memory address uh, related information, then address will be given. If it is a register, then register will be given here. Here, opcode is four bits. Opcode is say, says what has to be done, whether addition or subtraction, multiplication or comparison, all those things. So all those things, what is the operation to be carried over on these uh, registers or address given here? So that is said to be the opcode. And this, whatever in, uh, sub, you are supplying, that's said to be operand. Okay, the opcode operates on the operand and execute the respective task. Now we'll see some more uh, basic of instruction format. The basic computer has three instruction code. In this, again, the same uh, instruction can be written in three ways. One is, see here, 0 to 11 address, then 12 to 14. That is three address, three bits for opcode and the last bit is for mentioning whether it is well, what type of uh, what type of address it is whether direct address or indirect address so here opcode runs through 000 to 110 okay so if it is 11 all one and this is zero this uh, zero uh, see far here uh, is equal to zero means it is direct address one means indirect address. We will see what is direct and indirect in short. Okay, so this uh, just understand uh, the bit here mentioned is a direct address. If it is zero, this bit is zero, then it is direct address. If this bit is one, it is an indirect address, right? Now, if this is zero, zero to one, one, zero, then here all these are memory reference. That is the instruction here given add means it is adding a value from the memory. Right? That is the meaning. If it is uh, 1, then that means, uh, sorry, here, if it is 0, then all the uh, register reference, if it, if it is from 0, 0 to 1, 1, 0, and this bit is 0, then all are memory reference. If it is 0 and all are 1, then it is register. Register operation is carrying over. If it is 1 and all are 1, then this is for I.O. operations. So this is the difference between uh, by modifying this bit, you can change. That is, if it is 0 and if the opcode is from 00 to 110, then it is memory reference. Whatever data here is memory reference. If it is 0 and 111, then it is address. That is a register operation. If it is all are 1, that is, uh, the first bit is 1, then it says that it is an I.O. operation. We will see uh, by giving the values, We'll, we'll see with an example. We'll see in short. Now we'll see the instruction format types. There are uh, basically four uh, instruction format types. One is zero address, one address instruction, two address instruction, and three address instruction. What is zero address instruction? Uh, almost all the stack operations or stack-based operations are comes under the zero address instructions. Here, a stack-based computer does not use the address field of the instruction. Arithmetic operation pops two operands from the stack and pushes the result. So almost all the stack operations comes under this. One address in section. Here it uses only the accumulator. Mainly the accumulator and memory are used. It will not use any other uh, registers much. So since accumulator always, always the accumulator provides one operand. Only one memory address needs to be specified. When you are going to add two values, one value is implied that one value is present in accumulator. So only the address the, of the next or the register of uh, the another operand will be given here. Two address insertion. In this insertion, two address registers or two memory locations. They are explicitly specified. Here implicitly, it, they will not give explicitly the accumulator. So it means the accumulator is implied. Then three address instruction. In this instruction, three address registers or memory locations are specified. We'll see one by one. An instruction that contains no address fields, operand sources and destinations are both implicit. So for example, CMA, complement. The meaning of this is complement accumulator. Here, the address is not given. Only the opcode is given. Okay, CMA, complement accumulator, which means whatever the value present in accumulator, if it is a zero, one will be, uh, 
uh, it will be converted into one. If it is one, then zero will form. So all the eight bits, if you take accumulator consists of eight bits means, if you give this instruction, the value in the accumulator will be complemented. Now we'll see the example. Consider the evolution of an arithmetic expression using stack. The, to evaluate, it must be converted into postfix notation. That's what we have seen in the previous stack organization example. So let us take an infix, infix expression. An infix expression is nothing but this is an operand, this is an operand, and this is an operator. So when you write uh, the operator in between two op operands, then we call it as an infix expression. So this is what for our, our day-to-day day -day life, we are following this infix notation only. But in computer, you have to convert it into postfix expression or prefix expression. Postfix expression is after the operand, the operator comes. See here, A, B plus, then C, D plus, then this. Because anything within the bracket has to be evaluated first. What is the precedence rule? Anything within the bracket that has to be evaluated. And then if it is a uh, star and uh, division has more uh, the next precedence, and then plus and minus has the next level precedence. Okay, so when uh, it is that, uh, when both plus and minus comes, whichever comes in the first. Now oh, I'll get that. Say here. See, when you have uh, anything within bracket, that will be evaluated first. This is the precedent level one. Time being, I'm telling you this. So the next one is star and slash isn't it star and slash star okay then slash so uh, here uh, after this so anything within bracket first it will be evaluated then uh, the one expression which has star and slash should be evaluated then what comes? Plus and minus. Plus and minus. Right. So uh, this has the lowest precedence. Then this and then this. Within this, whichever comes first. If if the slash that is division comes first, that will be evaluated first. And star star when it comes next, that will be evaluated the next. So from left to right order. This is how the precedence rule works. So now, if you take this example, first we are converting into postfix means A, B, put the plus, because this is within the bracket. So this has more precedent than this stuff. So, and this is, has to be already because this, this is within the bracket. So C, D plus. Then if you take, this will be one operand and this will be one operand. The operator is in between. So take this operator. So this, when you execute, when you evaluate this, along with the operator, this will become one operand. And this becomes another operand. Now this operator will be placed here. So this is what postfix expression. Okay. Now what you have to do is, we have to uh, use the uh, stack, how to evaluate this. That's what we are going to see now. Top, you know, top always point to the top of the stack. And the MX represents the memory location. Let us say this is a memory stack. Now here, first push A. So how you will be evaluating this? First push A. You know the postfix evaluation, you have to scan from left to right. Whenever there is an operand, you have to push it into the stack. When there is an operator, do two pops. Pop the top two operand, execute the operation, and then push the result back into the stack. This is what the, till the end of the string, till the end of the expression. This is what you have to do. Now we have converted into postfix. Now what you do, how you will evaluate this first, push A. So the stack 
in the stack, it is push. Now top of the stack pointer is pointing here. Now push B. Now A. Now top pointer is moved here. Now pointer is here. A B. Then what you have to do? The next is an operate operator plus. So when you scan, the next is an operator. So what you have? Pop B. Pop A. Do A plus B and then push the result back in the stack. This is what we are doing. Right. So add. If you say push A. See here. Push A. It is using an register. That it is implied. Okay. Push B. Here. Then add. When you say just add, then these two are popped and then add. So here that that statement is not a pop. Two pops will be there. Now add means top A plus B and then again the result is push bank into the stack like this. Then push C. What is that? This. Push C. Then push D. Okay. Now push the D also value will be pushed. And then what we do? Add. Add. So C plus D. So here, I think this is some other uh, result. This, this is an example for this equation. So what you do is you will push C plus D. Now I'll show you. So A is pushed and then B is pushed. Then these two value are added. So that will be placed A plus B. Then what? Uh, if you see this, what is the next one? A, B, this is more finished. C, D is pushed. Okay. So uh, now C is pushed and D is pushed. Then we come across plus. So these two are popped. So now after that, these two values are added. A plus B, C plus D are pushed. The value is pushed. Here, since I have not given the value, I'm just pressing the, pushing the uh, values. You have to imagine that values are substituted and push. Then we have star, we come across star. So now what you do, you pop this value, you pop this value, the result. So for example, if the result is seven and the result is five, then you will pop these two value, then seven into five is done and then push into the, push back into the star. Now, if you see this, this example, let us see this example. This is another postfix expression. Now, push A, then B is push, then uh, these two are added, and then you push C. Then, when you come across star, you pop these two values and evaluate. This this has been done. Okay, A plus B values are done. So C into A plus B is done, and that value is pushed. Then uh, what you have is plus. Okay. Now you push the uh, D operator and then uh, push E. Uh, D and E are multiplied and it is pushed back. And then uh, these, two, these two values are added. That's what given here. So if you take this, there is no memory is not much referred. It is only the stack memory is referred. So you just use the uh, uh, registers, push A, push B, and then add. So these two values are added. Here, even accumulated is also not much used. Okay, so then multiply it and then pop X. Pop X is nothing but the top value is pointed. That will be stored in memory. It will be popped and the value is stored in the location given here. Here results in longer program codes. Even for doing this, we need a lot of push and pops has to be done. So in order to do that, we have to write uh, um, the instructions should be more. So we'll see in the next video.